Hi everyone! <laughs> hello, hello, hello! Welcome back! This is week three. I know, it's going so yeah. quick, isn't it? It really is. It's not going to be long, it's going to be blooming Christmas. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have so much information for you today. I, I had to print it out. I have that much information on how to write a sexy scene. I like it. You like it? I like it. And bear with me because okay. I'm just trying to share this to the group. Okay, shall we wait for a sec? No, you carry on. Okay, so you already learned how to write a steamy scene. <laughs> a steamy story, a classic bodice ripper, a risque passage. It's all about sex, right? Well, absolutely. Maybe not. Maybe there's more than meets the... Um, <clears throat> Proverbial eye. <laughs> <laughs> First, I want to say this is going to be PG-13. We need to keep it PG-13. So, use your best euphemisms. Okay. okay. I can do that. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is heat levels. Yes, and I'm sorry, I'm having hot flushes today. I know. It's, I, it's, it's a hot topic. It is a hot topic. It's, it's, but... it's, it's, it's a hot Topic. We haven't even started talking yet, and I'm having a hot flash. <laughs> I mean, that, that goes that says something, really, doesn't it? Sorry, I'm just gonna keep mopping myself. I might have to just throw my water on her. <sighs> you, I look like you've already done that. Actually, <laughs> I look so hot. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna keep it PG-13, so it'll be okay. First, I want to discuss heat levels. Okay, which is very important. It is. It is. Yeah. There's five heat levels. There's five. There's know. like goes from mild to medium, those okay. first three. Yeah. But we're gonna skip over those because there's just like maybe kissing on those and behind the doors kind of right. So basically the talking, stuff. just having a little smooch if onto that, full right, on right. Azure and if you're you know, if you're writing that kind of um they call it clean fiction or clean romance, then you would want to make sure that you kind of looked at what those one through three were. Okay. What we're gonna be talking okay. today is about uh, level four and five which which to be fair is what our authors are struggling with the ask. most yeah that that is what mm -hmm. people are struggling with is is doing the real steamy scenes but keeping it realistic mm -hmm. so one of the levels is, is called hot or steamy okay and um it's basically like an r-rated movie that's the right level. okay yeah uh, that's a good way to think about it actually mm -hmm. as in movie ratings mm-hmm mm -hmm. And then level, level, oh yeah, level five is called scorcher or explicit or erotic. Right, does that... So that's explicit sex and graphic depictions. Right, so basically it's where you it's, describe lots of different... It's sex, right. Bodily right. actions and things. And, and actually erotic fiction, erotic romance really, is uh, described as the emotional journey lived through sexual experience. That makes sense. Okay. That does make sense. Uh -huh. And um, I've written two, and we'll um, like throw in some examples from those okay. as, as we go. But the thing is, like, um, you can also break that boundary. I believe I did in Confessions of a Sheba Queen. So right. it's actually a full story without, I mean, and then I put the sex in kind of thing. But we're right, going to okay. go over that. Yeah, but I mean, it, but it was part of the, it had to be integral. It, had, it was yeah. integral part it, of the plot. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, if you look at definitions, it'll say that erotic romance pushes boundaries. They use graphic language. Yeah. It usually contains multiple sex scenes. I mean, after all, that's why you're reading it. Well, yeah, <laughs> and it's real life, isn't it, at the end of the day? Because most stories are to do with new relationships mm -hmm. when all the passion's there mm -hmm. and the energy. And they're younger. <laughs> and if it's erotic romance, yeah. if it's erotic romance, it has to have, like, the happy ending. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. yeah, because that's what the readers want, isn't mm -hmm. it? That's what they want. Yeah. Um, and it can also bring in a lot of things that people aren't maybe used to or they want to read more about, like BDSM, um, all those menages, multiple partners, and all those things we don't want to say on PG-13. Yes. Now, the doors have quite opened on that, hasn't it? Since E.L. James and Fifty Shades of Grey, mm -hmm. it really has opened the doors and, and reduced the amount of taboos with it has to it really has you know, domination and that oh sort yeah of they stuff. Kick, she kicked down the barn door oh absolutely definitely yeah um and but there's always those stories like yeah. always yeah I, I mean judy bloom i don't remember if you guys remember judy bloom i 
I've there never was one, read any Judy Blume. It was like a, a YA, and there was one sex scene, and yeah, it was like three yeah. pages, and, and it went through the whole high school, and you know, it was dog-eared and all that. <laughs> one to one, like that. <laughs> so really, erotic fiction um, is just, you know, you can't, you the story can't be told, you know, without the sex kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but before we even get into that, it's part of that, but not, well, we'll see. Do you know the very first thing that we're going to talk about? Do you have any guesses? The connection between two people? No. Like the look? We're going to be talking about consent. Which is consent. highly important. Okay. Uh, readers, a lot of readers, a lot of publishing, editors. Okay, they require, they require consensual sex. And I know there's a lot of indie writers out there. I mean, there's a lot of them who are writing, you know, rape fantasies and dinosaur fantasies. And, and yeah, there's like no yeah. consensual sex. And it turns off a lot of readers. It, it really does. And, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. and you're not going to get picked up by a publishing house. Because no, they, they have will to not have... touch it with a barge pole. Mm -hmm. um, and I really, myself, I didn't like dawn on me. Uh, even like I, all of my sex was consensual, but I didn't realize the importance of it until I was on a um, a podcast um, from the reader's perspective. I was on a right, podcast okay. called Kinky Ladies, and I'm gonna put the their URL um, podcast in the in the oh, on in the, the links in the comments. Wonderful. Okay, Wonderful. they are they actually um, they review all the trashy books. Oh, and they're four women and they're hysterical and so they will read on their podcast they will read little sections and they'll look at reviews and then it's like four gal pals totally dishing about erotica oh it's, it's awesome. really funny but uh, and i'll post the links on there they're oh, on stitchers uh, i'll be Stitcher, doing this evening <laughs> on podcast. um they actually reviewed confessions of a shiva queen i i knew that and i think i have actually shared that link before okay so, well, I'm going to put yeah. their link in there yeah. so you can look at their other yeah, stuff. Yeah, easy to find. Um, so, well, one of the things they discuss is they don't like, they just, they hate it, is non-consensual sex. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it, they don't find it sexy, and I think they probably, they represent a lot of readers. Yeah, because, I mean, let's face it, I mean, most people, genuinely nice, honest people like us, just the thought of, of, you know, when, when it's non-consensual, it just it, straight away get, gets your heckles up. Right, it's right. It's a bad feeling. You're like, oh, right. I don't know what's coming next. Right. I've had to literally put... I, there's been a couple of times where I've read a book and I didn't like how it was starting and I've actually put it down and never picked it up again. And the same with movies. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. God, what's that yeah. prison one? I don't know. And besides readers who, who like that, um, editors of publishing houses, like I said, um, they have to have consensual sex. And it, and it has to be obvious, which I didn't realize as well. Right. There, it was uh, in my one of the short stories, Legends of Lust. Um, there was one of the short stories where um, it's like a takeoff from you know the the the, um, the well, I don't want to give it away, but <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, the the toll for passing through the forest is to have sex with the fairy, the fae. Right. Okay. And so one of the the editor notes was this has to be consensual. You must say something in here. That she says yes right okay so basically you have to be really clear you have to be clear right it has okay. to be clear interesting okay Sorry, just keep so for um for writers who are what want to write that right you know sexy scene and keep in mind that you know before you have your hunky dude ravage a woman that it's consensual right okay yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. That does make sense. Okay, so um, are you ready to learn how to write that sexy scene? Okay, um, writing erotic fiction, which is, you know, I write that, but I also write sexy scenes in my yes. historical fiction. It's fun and it's a lot of hard work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but honestly, I write historical, I write my erotica like I do a novel. I write a yeah. story about a flawed character. Yeah. And um, they have a quest and they want to achieve something. Okay. Just like you do a story. Yeah. Just like you do any novel. So yeah. that that comes first. Um, and it's the story doesn't have to necessarily be like erotic or all about sex. Okay, but it's the main story's need that drives the story forward. And it's from their actions and the story yes. itself that the steamy scenes 
kind of arrive. Evolve. Yeah. Arise, yeah. evolve. Yeah. yeah. So in other words, when I write the story, um, the story comes before the spice. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you definitely need to have that build up, don't you? Yes. And possibly, you know, show that chemistry, mm -hmm. give the reader a little taste of what could be coming. Mm -hmm. um, it's very important. It really is. Yeah. And, yeah. and when I wrote Confessions of a Shiva Queen, I, I mean, I had the whole idea for the story. I had it all outlined. And so for me, I always just want to get the story out there yeah. and I would write it. And then instead of actually writing the sexy scene, I would just write sex scene here. And I would like put a couple notes about what and why I wanted to happen yeah. and then move on to the next part. Yeah. So, so you keep the momentum of the story going. Right. So then I came okay. back and then I filled in with things and we'll kind of go over some more, um, about that. That's a clever way of doing it. Yeah. Um, but that's how I do it. Other people may do other things. I, I, I mean, there's no one right way. No, I think we're all we're all very different on how we write, aren't we? I mean, with mine, I I do it straight off. You know, as soon as it hits the a sex scene, um, I do the anticipation, the build up, and everything else, um, and then I'll actually write the sex scene. And I do try and be descriptive, but in a tasteful way whilst leaving a lot to the, to well, the we're, reader's imagination. We're going to discuss that. We're going we're, mm -hmm. <laughs> we're to discuss that. Okay. But sex in a novel can be a whole lot more than just sex. Yes. Okay. Um, but I want to just, you know, kind of backtrack a little bit and just say with the sex scenes a lot or erotica or just you know, any big sex scene like that, you're really providing the reader with a vicarious experience of the character's most intimate moments. So Absolutely. that is, I mean, it's it's a joy, it's a privilege, it's also a little scary. So you, yeah, you know. Um, so and also, I think a lot of the appeal for women, and I've had men erotic readers. So I think oh, that's absolutely, really interesting. absolutely, yeah. Is I mean, it's more fun to read it than to watch it for women. I think right um see i think women are a lot more complicated when it comes down to sex <laughs> and, I, and i don't mean that disrespectfully um but i think in general men just need um a little less stimulation than women women need a little bit more detail a bit more we need it in our head I building think, right yeah yeah i mean you get to experience it with the character you're in the character's yeah. head you yeah. get their sensations which yeah. is it's just a more kind of it's deeper, it's deeper it's right? Deeper yeah, you're you're not just in you, you know you're in their head and their body. Yes, which is yeah. it's kind of sexy. Yeah, it right? is. It is okay. So here I'm gonna run through a list of things um, that you need to consider before writing the sexy scene. Okay. Okay, and well, I, I want to get pen and paper. Yeah, but you know, and you don't even have to have to because after this, in the next 24 hours, I will um, upload it to YouTube, and then I will just have. Fantastic. I will have stuff going on there and then it'll just be right there for you. She's so efficient, isn't she? <laughs> okay, so things you want to consider before <laughs> writing the sexy scene. Is the sex scene advancing the plot? Yeah, and I, I must admit that's very important because I have read books where I thought that just feels like it's in the wrong place or it's just unnecessary. It's not adding to anything. So that is very important, I must admit. Mm -hmm. Very important. Is it, and we're going to discuss this is the set is the scene providing characterization characterization mm. here's your chance yeah, yeah okay so and and i've written articles about this for like womenwriters.org about writing erotica but i think a lot of it is just like my literary degree kind of sits in like whispers <laughs> in my ear that i want the characters to get something um I want you. I want to show the reader something more about the characters than just the sex. Yes. And I also want the character to get more out of the sex than just satisfaction. Yeah. And and also, it's a great opportunity to, if you want to, to surprise your readers from your character, mm -hmm. because just like with us real people, you know, it sometimes the quiet ones are always the worst. <laughs> You see what I mean? So it can always give mm -hmm. you an opportunity to show a completely different side, secret Absolutely. side to a character as well. They're 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 naked, really. It, it, it's not just 
physically, but um, emotionally, emotionally, and, spiritually, yeah. in all those ways. Absolutely. So some things I think about is the character's emotion. Yeah. What yeah. emotions are going through their head right now? This is a, way, a chance to convey that emotion. Yeah. Um, and what is the sex and their choice of partner saying about them or their relationship with them? Here's yes. your chance to delve more into characterization. Yeah. Why yeah. that partner? Why that move? What what emotions are going through? You really get yeah. to m craft and mold more characterization yeah. of of all parties involved. Be it you know and what sparked it? solo, double, or m multiple. <laughs> <laughs> Very true yeah. though. Um, is the character growing in some way? Uh, no, not that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a PG joke. It's PG thirteen. <laughs> so how are are they growing? Okay, yeah, yeah. spiritually, intellectually, uh, any of the lees <laughs> that you yeah, can think and, and of. Confidence, confidence. You know, any of maturity. Those. Absolutely. Um, another thing: does the char the scene reflect the the characters' conflicts or struggles? Okay, or are they overcoming a conflict or a struggle through that? Now you don't have to do this with sex yeah, scenes. It yeah. can be completely gratuitous. Yeah. But yeah. I I kind of like to just jam pack it with stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know. It, or as you said, the opportunities are endless, aren't they? They really are. They really are. Mm. Now here's another one. Um, is the character breaking cultural or societal rules and expectations? Is this important, and why? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've got people, you know, having relationships from different religions. Mm -hmm. From, you know, some people, if they're doing um, sort of books that are set in India, it can be, you know, two different classes of people. Mm -hmm. It can be a whole different dynamic, can't it? Mm -hmm. Is the act taboo? Is this important? And why? I think that is very, very important because some acts some sexual acts people still find very shocking mm -hmm. um so i think you have to be very careful whether you include really shocking sexual acts or not because you've got the you know it's either going to turn people off your books or they're going to love it mm -hmm. another thing to consider is the act selfish or loving is it important yes. <laughs> and why so you can see with these questions you can really delve more deeply Mm. into your character so you're not just you know saying this goes there and this does this and is whatever you're actually using all of those things to you know fully flesh out your characters yeah yeah absolutely oh, oh, there's this um scene in confessions of a sheba queen uh where she, when she becomes queen okay um she becomes queen and just like very recently, like within the 24 hours, and somebody who had helped her, who, who really helped her along the way in the last week, uh, you know, she wants him to be in her employ and work for her because she did this with the people that helped her. Right. And so there's a scene where um, he says, you know, I'm, 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 your, I'm your servant, I'll do anything for you, I mean, to serve her, you know, because she's, you know, the, yeah. the queen. And um, the sex scene, he's very, worshipful oh okay and he comes crawling on his knees to her to show that he has fully submitted to her as a queen right so it's like a respectful thing as well right, right. very respectful thing. and so i used all that one to show how she was able to um you know take these people who you know she had met and she they become her like devoted followers right okay and they adore her and they and they come on their knees to her um and then at the end of the scene um she's in there she's they're in the throne room Ooh. and so the, yeah there's that stuff going on there right um but then he never sits on her chair because he knows who's boss so Very i use that to show that she has she is queen yeah yeah and, and, and the di dynamic place. that has changed in their relationship and everything mm -hmm. so there's a lot you can do with it yeah. very forceful to me, she. so <laughs> <laughs> so here are some things the reader can learn about a character from the sex okay, okay. are they shy adventurous yeah demanding okay selfish yeah. 
here's your chance to show all that. Yeah, deep right? character traits that you wouldn't see in everyday life. Absolutely. Okay. Um, you can really show their true personality. Yeah, you know, absolutely. In ways that you know you wouldn't. I mean, it just gives you another opportunity. It does. I don't really think it's just sex and then you move on to a story. Yeah. You, you can yeah. integrate those things. Yeah. You know, um, how and why a character has sex, how, how they have it and why they have it. Okay. Yeah. Provides insight. Yeah. About their motivations, their dreams, their weaknesses, their strengths, their ambitions. Yeah. Are they just doing it because they need to get from point A to point B? Well, yeah, because so, some characters, you know, use that. As a stepping stone to get what they want, don't mm -hmm. they? Absolutely. Absolutely. So now we're going to go into the kind of really sexy stuff, but still keep it PG-13. Bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for me, writing a steamy scene is, it takes me the longest to write the steamy scenes, honestly. It's to me, it's the trickiest part. It's the most challenging part because so much, so much can go horribly, horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. I so can see that. Instead of writing that erotic, sensual scene, it becomes like cringe worthy or laugh worthy, and that, that's not sexy, right? See, I must admit, I don't, I don't, I, I find that a lot easier. Okay. I, I honestly do. Okay. Um, and I don't know whether that's because of my background, because many, 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 many years ago, um, I used to write, one of the jobs that I did was writing content for for other people and websites and stuff like that. And, and I, you know, some of it was a bit fresh. Fresh. Well, I think for a lot of people, when they write that sexy scene, it sounds sexy in their head and um then you then they write it and other people are like yeah no so it's like words that they have used yes. phrases that they, the wrong word Honestly. something that isn't sexy um i had a um when uh like when kinky ladies um was reviewing confessions of the sheba queen something i thought was super sexy and all my friends thought were super sexy they did not find super sexy so you can have differences there yeah absolutely well. and it's worthwhile doing research as well i found you know and and because you can google anything you can can't you and and you can google you know what is the most preferred you know words for breasts or whatever you know and it's things like that because there are certain words that will literally just turn people off and you don't want to immediately you don't want to use those like the c word no yeah don't, don't big no no yeah and, and moist. There are so many women who hate the word moist. I don't get that. I don't either. It doesn't bother me at all. It doesn't bother there's me. I don't think there's many words that do bother me that okay. will make me go cringy. Um, but that is a big one. And one of my friends can't bear the sound of that word. No, that, that is weird. Mm. Let me know who it is so I can just go around and go moist. <laughs> moist. <laughs> you <were> so <laughs> naughty. <laughs> So really, erotic writing or writing a sexy scene is really about using sensual description yes. to make it sound great. And I mean, you, I, I can make drinking a cup of coffee sound sexy. So will you play along with me? She didn't see this coming. This is supposed to be PG-13. No, it's I'm totally PG-13. Okay. Yeah, I, gave, I gave her some coffee earlier. You ready? I'm just going to read this because I already wrote it. You ready? The anticipation is killing me. <laughs> Beth's hand gripped the cup of coffee, its heat sinking deep into her skin. She lifted the mug. She lifted the mug to her lips, and let its steamy sweetness caress her senses. She was one drop of bliss away from succumbing to its arousing effects. Beth touched her greedy lips to the rim swallowed the liquid heat and let its potency glide down her eager throat that was a bit saucy <laughs> that was a bit saucy i need to choke on my coffee she was so saucy <laughs> it's the words it really really is and 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 being realistic with your description and the actual actions that are happening mm -hmm. and you just tied it all in one go mm -hmm. 
and it's it's very true i love the fact that you you know you said about the heat from the coffee and stuff, and stuff things like that because i find that those are the most important key elements is describing how the person's body is reacting to whatever it is mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the words it really yeah, is yeah but here's the thing you can't throw a scene like that the scene that i just read the paragraph i just read into something that's stark antiseptic or out of place because it feels inauthentic and it, it jars the reader yeah it's so, got to be legitimate isn't yeah, it it's got it's to the, lead from something does. to somewhere and that's not sexy you can't go from like cold that you know and so it's your writing you know it has to feel authentic so i think the sex scenes have to work best when they're when the story itself is lush with description and yes. other senses as well yeah and a, and a, a, and some type of build up even if it's just really subtle um you know connecting eyes you know the, the eye contact he's looking at me i'm getting goosebumps and just little things like that and you have all do a yeah. build up and you have all, all these senses and i think people sometimes forget the senses yeah there's yeah. hearing there's taste there's smell there's there's tactile and and if you have all those throughout your your novel then when you uh embed those into your sex scene it's gonna ring authentic yes yeah i agree okay and there's and i think a lot of people i remember when i had gone to a conference one of the um the writers said you know he just kind of throws out his rough draft but then he goes back and when he does his other drafts he makes sure he adds all those other senses in as well yes yeah absolutely and because we they're all realistic for, right I mean, you need to smell things we smell things right we hear things yeah we, we feel yeah. things and, and that's i think sometimes people forget that and you don't want like a yeah. big and we've discussed this you don't need to drop yeah. in a whole paragraph of, of you just kind of like throw that in here and there through dialogue kind yeah of it, it's it's the, there's very small little details that you toss in that can really bring it home, isn't it? Mm -hmm. As you said, mm -hmm. you know, just the fact that, you know, your character smells something that's close or something that wafts past or, uh, you know, a cold breeze that makes her shiver or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a million cool ways to say yeah. things. Yeah. And the more you write, the better you get at it. Yes, absolutely. So, ready for more sexy stuff? Does it involve more coffee? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, the descriptive language needs to resonate with time, place, and culture. Yes. For example, you really can't say something as smooth as silk if there was no silk at the time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah right? that, that's Yeah. Yeah. And so for me, I, I write historical erotica. So that's been a challenge because I can't use metaphors and imagery that are modern. It doesn't yeah. work. Or even like, you know, how big something is. I can't say it was as big as a cell phone or, or something. I have to, so I have to go back in time in my brain and come up with metaphors and imagery, which is really tough, that will give you a sense of size of, of, of size or smell, smell. yeah that's or, really um, do you know what i never even thought of that for your books i mean there was um i wanted to describe i can't remember what it was it was white something white and you know there's a lot of white out here you know the white concrete the white yeah, this, yeah. but i i'm just like okay what was white back then okay clouds uh alabaster statues yeah i mean i yeah. didn't have you know um it has to be something that somebody knows and especially size yes. you know, was, was difficult because that we we have a lot of things that they didn't have you know inches back then or no. or if they did it was going to be something else that the writer like the reader wouldn't know and and i remember once there was um i had used um a metaphor fast as a gazelle for something not for sex <laughs> okay we don't and, want that <laughs> and and one of the edit notes that came back was you used this metaphor already oh <laughs> dang it so i had to find okay fast as what it can't be fast as a car yeah can't yeah. be fast as brewing tea for the whistle they didn't have yeah, that either yeah. so you have to find something that and so a lot of for me for the historical erotica is me just sitting staring into space yeah i, I do you know what i said i didn't even think of something like that for your books but my god that must really 
fit all up. It, it will. I, and sometimes I just have to start Googling things or I'll Google pictures or images and yeah, try to figure just get out. Some inspiration. Yeah, because we, we were, we're so reliant on more modern terms. Yeah. We and, all. and metaphors and imagery. And it doesn't work where, you know, especially for something like Confessions of a Sheba Queen, where. <laughs> See, I have that other problem where, because I'm English and, I, and I'm still very English, even after nine years, I come out with words and expressions that are so English and um, I have to literally when I when my test readers and my editor they have to correct me on all that because it I just I write how I talk so I describe things how I talk so I feel your pain <laughs> <laughs> so you really want to come up with things that are within either the historical context yes or the space that it doesn't jolt the reader and like, wait a minute, that was a weird, odd description. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a term, a literary term for something out of time. It's called anachronistic. Yeah. And, you know, you're not Shakespeare, so you can't do that. <laughs> he did that in a few of his plays. We yeah. can't do that. We can't do that. Um, another thing, and there, there's like varying thoughts on this, is not every word, especially the naughty word, should be historically accurate. Uh, because... They had different words for different things, and if I gave you the historically accurate word, you'd be like, I don't know, well, who's that? Yeah, and, and that, that's the thing, isn't it? There's nothing worse. I don't know about you, but I don't actually enjoy having to keep looking up words for you don't a book want... I'm reading. No. Because mm -hmm. it completely jolts me out of the story. It takes, yeah, it take, whoosh, takes you right and, out. And it takes me a while to get mm -hmm. back in the flow and enjoy it. So mm -hmm. I'm like you. I, I don't put words in there that I think... Who's going to know that? Who's yeah. going to know it? And, and for so often, like I said, I write historical fiction and some of the regular historical fiction has the sexy scenes. And you just, you can't use what they used. It just, it would jolt them out of the story. And yeah. I know that's why a lot of history professors hate historical fiction because it's not, you know, 100% historical. But if you have to look up a word for something, it, it that's doesn't it. You're work. not reading it yeah. to learn, are you? You're reading it to lose yourself in, a, in an amazing story. So yeah. we kind of touched on this briefly, but do you want to know a sexy secret? Go on. <laughs> Some, <laughs> sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's what's not described. Or described in such a way that it allows the reader imagination to take over that's the most sexy i do you know what i completely agree with you 100 percent. because we all have different sexual preferences and if they're allowed to use their imagination and fill in some of the blanks then it's tailored to them specifically because it's in their brain that's right. They're doing it. So like, as an author, so I trust the reader's experience, knowledge, their appetites, what they like, what they don't like yeah. to fill in yeah. the gaps. So I'm always, I, it's always kind of amusing when I have different, you know, people will interpret a scene differently. Yeah. And the one will go, oh, that was woo, so nasty and they're doing this. And I'm like, mm. and then another, like, oh, that was just so sweet. And I, <laughs> you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Because when, when I did, when I did my first two, I, you know, I, and I'm learning, you know, obviously I, I do nothing but learn at the moment. Um, but I had a lot of my readers saying that yeah, it was perfect. The scenes were, you know, in the right places, blah, blah, blah. And yet I had other readers who were saying, well, I wish you'd put a shit load more in. <laughs> like, you know, they, yeah. they wanted loads more. And I'm like, well, it's a fine line. Yeah. Because you're trying to please everybody. You know, you just write for you. A exactly. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I think sometimes, unless it's, unless you're marketing something as erotica, then you've got to have a really fine line because otherwise it's going to be too much for a lot of people. Aren't you? you know? Well, yeah, there's like, yeah, I mean, there's some stories that have tons and tons of scenes in them and, and, and some that don't have enough and they're still called erotica because they have it so i don't yeah i don't know there, there, i think there might be a rule i don't know what the rule is maybe there's like an unspoken rule i don't know i, I put mm. it in every so often i make sure to put it in every so often yeah i think as long as it adds to the story and the depth of the story you can't go wrong right but th that's the thing I, I think if you're just adding it for the sake of adding it that's gratuitous just, 
exactly just to try and keep a few people happy you're going to ruin it for well the you rest. can never you can never make everybody happy no you, you can't know that. no you can't so a more sexually adventurous reader is going to interpret and imagine and picture it much differently than someone who's more reserved and, and that's absolutely. in your benefit absolutely you know? um so it really so the writer you know and the reader i mean it, this is where they kind of kind of come together and it le leads to like a powerful visualization that the writer yes. couldn't just achieve on their own. Yeah, I, I, com I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's kind of what makes kind of writing erotica and those sexy scenes like kind of cool. Yeah. And the know? thing is, it, if, you, if you're doing a sex scene and, the, you know, one of the characters you're quite attracted to from everything that you've read before, you know, you, you're going to place yourself as that you know as the recipient oh okay so i want to recommend some sources is that okay recommendations sources. absolutely fabulous okay so the first one i'm going to recommend um is a podcast it's called girl boner radio yes okay and i'm going to put the link at the bottom okay um she has a podcast she's on stitcher she's on uh apple podcast and um, it, her name is August uh, McLaughlin, and she shares like um, health and sexuality and empowerment stories. And she has this very lovely kind of inspirational way of doing it. Aww. And so if you want to kind of like learn more about that, I really yeah. like suggest going. And she also wrote a book oh, um, about that as well. So she's been there, done it. Yeah, I, I had the great privilege of actually being on um, that po one of her podcasts. So that was kind of amazing. Oh, fantastic. But she just, I mean, just kind of very thoughtful and, and provoking yeah. And, yeah. And, and like a, intimate portrayals of like real issues and problems. Yes. So, you know, if you yeah. have, you know, have a chance, take a look at, you know, look at podcasts like that it'll give yeah. you like a, a really good peek inside or view yeah um, knowledge is power yeah absolutely um and then also Clust press would they actually published you know legends of lust and um confessions of a sheba queen but they're actually a publisher of provocative intelligent books fiction and non-fiction about sexuality okay. lgbtq yeah. gender studies human yeah. rights and and the fiction part would be the erotica Fantastic. So if you have questions about stuff, like just go to a book and, and like read more yeah, about it. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And see what, see what you prefer and, you know, how you want to write. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing, isn't it? There, there's so much to think about. There really, really is. But I think it's also important, um, as we said earlier, to keep it as realistic as you can. Because the more realistic you write a sex scene the more it's going to flow in the book and the more the readers are going to really absorb well, what's we're, happening. We're actually going to talk about that next. <laughs> Just another, another... You think we'd rehearse this, but we don't <laughs> at all. Another, <laughs> another website I use is um, the Kam a Kama Sutra website. It's bookmarked on my computer. Well, that's logical because, yeah. I mean, the thing is, if you don't educate yourself, you know, if you're a fairly vanilla type of person, but your characters aren't, then you've got to educate yourself, you know, because there are so many positions. Mm -hmm. I've seen the Kama Sutra. I haven't read it, but I've seen it. And this has all this like little, like, like it's like blue and pink little, I mean, shirt, and you're like, oh, okay. So I didn't know the human body could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Not my age anymore, no. <laughs> so I think in a lot of ways, a sexy scene, or especially like an erotic scene, it offers a fantasy. Yeah, and absolutely. you said realistic, and I'm going to disagree with you there. Um, I think sexy scenes can be realistic, but erotica sometimes, especially an erotica book, you know, it offers a fantasy with a whole selection of like mind blowing, energetic things that ain't nobody can get in. Yeah, no, I was <laughs> I, I was meaning more as in bodies, your body's reactions during the scene. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because you you've got to show that. Mm -hmm. But you're right. I mean, I you know. And it's more than just like the Kama Sutra and the positions. Yeah. Okay. That there's should be way more to it than that. It, yeah. And you've been talking about this a lot. You've been talking about the slow teasing build up. Yes. The pleasure, the adventure, you know, and then you, and really a lot of those scenes offer women like, like, like an outlet for sexual freedom. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can read something totally nasty, something you would never do yourself. Yeah. Something that would yeah. might be taboo in with with your 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 mores, your culture, yeah. or, or your ethics. But you can read it and go, ooh, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so, that and it's private. 
Yeah, of course it is. It's private. Nobody yeah. has to know. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So I, I think that's a cool way. You're giving your readers a lot of freedom in a lot of ways to explore things they wouldn't have had yes. a chance to explore otherwise. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I actually want to end this because I actually have the recipe. I have a recipe for writing erotic fiction or it's writing so that awesome. sexy scene. Ready? Yeah, go on. All right. So ingredient one, you need characters with goals, dreams, faults, and strengths. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You need a plot <laughs> complete with conflicts, antagonists, and struggles. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number three, you need sensual descriptions and scenes. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, number four, you need sensual and consensual erotic moments yes consensual is the key especially <laughs> if you're going to be sending your work to literary agents publishing houses etc etc mm -hmm. very important mm -hmm. do not learn the hard way <laughs> i think i'm on number five five you need language that allows the reader to bask in the physical and emotional pleasure of the character yes yeah, but not to, don't do words that are just nasty and that are doing jerk people out of the story. Mm -hmm. Best be on the safe side. Oh, it really, really is. Because mm -hmm. otherwise you're just going to ruin the moment. <laughs> and number six, you need um, sexual positions and experiences beyond the ordinary. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always have to be vanilla. Mm -hmm. You can do different flavours if you want to. <laughs> so you stir it all together. Yeah. Add spice, add sweetener as needed, and then rewrite a billion times. That's pretty <laughs> much it, really. That's, can I just add something just at the end as well? Um, because I always think that, um, I'm just going to finish on this, because obviously we have so many different authors of so many different genres. Um, but a sex scene can also completely change your story if you want to, you know, make it a thriller, um, you know, add, I throw in a completely different dynamic. You know, it can be disappointing, it can be better than expected, it can turn into something really deep and meaningful. There's so All much to things. consider. So much to consider. Mm -hmm. But I would definitely, as I said, uh, we're going to have notes. You're going to put the links on and everything else. I'm going to put the links on and um, I will download this live. And yes. um, then I will put like all the links and all of the things I just told you. Like it usually just you know there's script going across the bottom. Fantastic. Um, so you don't. So yeah. Fantastic. Because no. I, there's a lot. There was like seven pages of notes. There, there is a lot <laughs> here, and it goes so quickly, doesn't it? But make sure you like Autumn's Facebook page, um, and join the website now. Uh, sorry, not the website, although she has got all that. Um, I meant the YouTube now. When you find Autumn, um, it's Autumn Bardot, don't forget. I still like saying that. Um, make sure you go on her channel and click to su subscribe, but also click on the little bell. And that means that any time that Autumn does another video, you'll get notified and you can watch it straight away. Um, and I, you'll get a message. I post videos twice a week. There we go. Tips. So, mm -hmm. And you don't want to miss out because so much of this is so valuable. Um, and, and we really appreciate it. Honestly, yeah. I'll say this to Wanda. We really appreciate you doing this. You are such you. a wealth of knowledge. Thank you. She's I like to share it. I like to pay it forward. Exactly. That's what we're all about. Paying it forward. Thank you so much. Okay. Darling. Hugs. Thank you. Hugs. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Bye-bye.